Good morning. Welcome. Uh, my name is Michael Cox. This is a uh, session on creating a Tableau COE, or Center of Excellence. I'm um, glad you're here. I know you have a lot of choices, a lot of uh, great sessions, both this morning and throughout the week. Um, so thank you for taking the time to be here. Hopefully it'll be a real uh, practical time where I can give you some, some tips and best practices and those kinds of things, and hopefully uh, answer your questions about what it is to build a COE. Um, I will leave time for questions at the end. I always try to make sure I, I don't go the full hour, so we have some time to do that. Uh, and I also usually don't, aren't able to get all of them in, and so I kind of hang out here afterwards if there's something specific to your environment that you want to talk about. Um, I'll do my best to be able to do that. Uh, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about, and I like to speak on it because I think I, I really believe in it. It's one of those things about um, Tableau that maybe it's, it's not the first thing that people think of, um, but if you've been using Tableau for any length of time in your organization, uh, it becomes an issue it, it eventually, and it becomes something that you, need to, you do need to think about. And I really have, in my you know, current position, I have a chance to work with customers on these kinds of issues, and I really believe in the power of a COE and its ability to uh, affect the value that you get uh, from Tableau, as well as the value you will bring to your organization, excuse me, around analytics. So those are, the, those are kind of my, my, you know, my background and my bias. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a principal architect at, at Tableau. What that basically means is I work with a lot of customers and I get to see things that they've done that, um, you know, to implement Tableau. I hopefully give them some suggestions on other ways. I see a lot of what works, a lot of what doesn't work. A lot of this presentation is driven um, on, based on what I've, I've seen out in the field and things that I've, I've uh, experienced and, and customer stories and, and, and things like that. So that's a lot of the background of what, what you're going to see today is real, kind of, you know, pretty real world uh, from, from our customers. Everything from you know, very large enterprises uh, down to you know, maybe people who've just purchased their first Tableau server and are wondering uh, how to get going. So a little bit about me, as I mentioned, I'm a principal architect. I guess a few things you should know about me. I'm based out of Chicago. Um, I was born in the area and lived in there most of my life. Not my whole life, but most of my life. Uh, that tends to color my thinking on a lot of topics, so uh, just be forewarned. Also tends to you know, occasionally creep into presentations uh, when you're least expecting it. So uh, that's my background, that's my bias. I'm just being completely honest about it up front. Um, one of the other things about me you should know is that I grew up um, watching uh, 80s comedies over and over and over, and that has completely screwed me up for life. It, my children will also attest to the fact that it's also kind of like screwed them up for life in a certain way because of the things I say, and they're like, Dad, where is that from? Oh, that's from this movie. Don't worry, you'll see it you know, when you're older or whatever. Uh, and so, for example, one of the things that, that we like to do in, in, in the city is um, uh, the Art Institute of Chicago is a great place if you're visiting. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. It's right on Michigan Avenue, a beautiful building. Whatever you're into, modern, old, renaissance, uh, impressionism, whatever, it's a great place to visit. So uh, I was there with my kids and you know, we, we you know, kind of did the usual thing, did the tour, took a, took a couple pictures. And then, um, I, this really wasn't fair to them, but I actually made them pose for this picture. <laughs> which, yeah, a few of you uh, apparently have, have recognized, if you need to see what the original in, in, uh, inspiration for the picture, <laughs> And you'll see where uh, perhaps I've, I've warped my children in terrible, terrible ways. So anyway. So uh, what we're, here's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction, talk about the Tableau COE, COE in general. Uh, I'm going to help you make the case for a Tableau COE. And I, I realize that in this room, uh, there are people who are already well into that journey. But I think it's really important to think about why this is why we're doing this. Why are we talking about a COE? Why are we implementing a COE? Uh, if somebody in my organization asks me about what's the point of this, you know, having a ready answer for them, being able to provide them with that information. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the case for uh, a COE. Uh, then I'll get much more practical and talk about some best practices. Um, the thing with the COE, it, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of different areas. There's different aspects of it. So I can only kind of give a survey of each of the areas, but I'm going to try to at least hit on all the major areas. You know, you could do classes on each of these areas potentially, right? And you can get a lot more information, um, you know, sort of this week. If I talk to you, know, if I talk about one of the things in COE is dashboard best practices. Well, there's about 45 sessions on dashboard best practices, right? So you're not going to get it all here, but you're going to understand hopefully a survey of all the things that go into uh, creating that that COE. Um, I'm also going to do some kind of getting started tips. I think sometimes, uh, you know, if I if I know one thing about a Tableau conference, when you leave, 
your brains will be full. They will be more than full. You will have gone through all these sessions. You're like, oh my gosh, I learned a lot, but I'm not sure what all I learned. I, that, that's just normal. Um, so what I've tried to do is give you some kind of practical things from getting started. All these slides will be available, so if you need a kind of a refresher at the end, you can go back and see that. But some real practical things that is a good way to kind of get started on your COE journey. So um, with that, let's, let's, uh, let's delve into this a little bit. Always good to start with a definition. So uh, this is a, this, I won't read the, the entire definition, but I have highlighted a couple things uh, here that I think are, are particularly important. Um, one is that it's a group of resources. A, a Tableau COE is not a person. And I think sometimes that's the expectation for a lot of organizations. It's like, you are the Tableau COE, and you're like, what? No, I'm one person. I'm going on vacation next week. I'm not the Tableau CEO. Um, right? So, so the, I, I want to make sure that, that even in a, in a smaller organization, even if it starts out where there's really only one person doing that, your goal is to make this about a group of resources, to make this about um, people within the organization working together. Um, never feel like you need to be the person for all the answers in Tableau. Um, you sh that's the kind of thing you want to you want to spread you know, throughout the, the organization. In what we do in consulting, I go out into organizations. My whole goal is to just pass on lots of information so that you know they they know and they can handle most of the situations that come up. So I, I really focus on making it a group of resources, even if that means that on day one it's 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 you or it's one person. Uh, and you can move beyond that. But your idea, the idea is to create you know, processes and, and, and actually create a successful deployment and usage. And that's another key uh, term. The, the, the word there is and usage. Um, I think sometimes we get focused a lot on the deployment and we focus on what's it going to take to get Tableau rolled out, right? I've got to install the desktop. I've got to install the server. I've got to add all the users. I'm done, right, or whatever, right? And so, so I think there's the, the whole idea of a COE is a COE is not there to set up Tableau. You know, a, a COE is there for the long run, right, to, to help your, your adoption and use of Tableau over the long run. It's not a start it and then close it down once we've got everything installed. So I really want to make sure that as, if you're thinking about a COE, you're focused on not just deployment, but deployment and usage of Tableau throughout the enterprise. Okay, so kind of a quick story on, uh, on, on how this, this, this has worked. Um, I've worked with a number of organizations who you know, thought they couldn't do uh, you know, a Tableau CRE or weren't sure how to get started or, or, or what, you know, kind of trying to recruit people early on. And, and one of the things that, that is interesting is that in many of those organizations, when they were able to get it done, um, I've come back like six months, nine months later, and now they're basically saying, how do we replicate the COE? You know, how do we create this in other parts of our organization? How do we actually expand this? Uh, you know, we've actually can't, you know, we can't support everything that we've created. Like they talked about this morning, you know, Tableau's gone viral, like they talked about it at Honeywell, and that's, you know, other places that, where that's happened. Um, it's, it's, it takes off, and then you're basically thinking about a replication issue. That's not an uncommon story to hear. Um, it sometimes is, you know, the, the initial getting it started, getting momentum, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's one of those things where uh, you probably have an idea that it's going to go like this when you're creating a, you know, or there's some picture in your mind, we're A and we're going to go to B and on this, the Tableau COE is going to help us get there. Um, and most often, uh, or not, I shouldn't say most often, but often, it, it's not unusual to have it be a little bit more of a circuitous route than you thought. There's things that come up within the organization. There's barriers that need to be overcome. There's things that, that you need to work through um, that you probably didn't anticipate. Part of what I want to do in, in, this, in this presentation today is, is maybe eliminate as many squiggles as we can, right? Try to get you as close to being able to make that, that journey uh, in a straight line as opposed to kind of moving all over the board. But um, realize that it's not always uh, that simple, and, and lots of organizations have faced that. Okay, so I'm going to introduce this concept called the COE iceberg, and I, I tried to come up with a good analogy for uh, how we want to talk about that, and an iceberg seemed as good as any. So um, we've got, in this case, we've got a real iceberg. Here's a picture of a real iceberg. Uh, we have a scary iceberg uh, from, from history, and now we're going to talk about the Tableau COE iceberg. So what's important about the Tableau COE iceberg? Well, the key thing about an iceberg in this context is what we all know is that the most of the mass is below the surface of the water, right? Most of an iceberg is not what you see, it's what you don't see. A Tableau COE functions in much the same way. Much of what it takes to be successful is not necessarily visible 
to the naked eye when you first begin thinking about it. And so um, what, hopefully I can uncover some of the things that are in the uh, underneath the water, if we want to, you know, to, to use our analogy, and help make sure that we're identifying not just the things that we know about that we're going to have to tackle, but the things that uh, maybe are a little bit more hidden and more, more difficult to predict. Okay, so there's more to this than we have great dashboards. Obviously, one of the things that people love about Tableau is how easy it is to set up and use and get started. You can download desktop, you can install it on your, on your PC, you can bring in some data from Excel, and you can create visualizations like that. And that's, that's a great, um, you know, it, it's a great first step, it's a great way for people to get going. And you can actually make a lot of progress with just that, uh, you know, in, in sort of replicating that in your organization. But at some point, you're going to reach the point where you can't sustain that pace by just simply having people download desktops and create things. You're going to run into these larger issues, and that's really where people begin to talk about um, a, a COE. So why are we trying to build a COE? I always like to do the same thing I do when I'm analyzing data. I ask why, right? I, I go back and I ask why several times. Oh, I want a report to do this. Well, why do you want that data? Well, it helps me understand this. Well, why do you need that? So when I'm asking questions about building a dashboard, I ask the why question. Building a COE is the same way. Why do we want to build a COE? At the end of the day, well, we want to empower our users. Well, why do we want to empower our users? Well, essentially, we want them to be able to make better business decisions. OK, OK, we want to help our users make better business decisions. That's a good reason, right? We want to give these people the power and flexibility to be able to answer questions maybe that they didn't even know they had. And so we're going to, we're going to continue to focus on how to get that done. That's what really matters. It's not about building a COE for a COE's sake. We're trying to focus on the end result, which is trying to get people uh, using uh, Tableau and getting value from it. Um, what's beneath the water? We're going to talk a lot about uh, each one of these things that are, that are below the water, uh, but there's a number of things, right? Everything from server architecture, data source management, um, things like user training, certified data sources, all those things that, um, that are really, really important security settings that maybe we're not thinking about when we first start our Tableau journey. But we know that we need to tackle those things if we're going to be successful. So why a COE? Well, we know is we want a COE because we want to tackle all those things that are underneath the water that are going to trip us up that if, we don't, if we don't address those. So what have I seen? Um, this is what I've seen when people who grow without a COE. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to have a formal COE, but in, oftentimes in, in organizations that I've worked with that have sort of grown organically and they've run into some issues, these are the kinds of issues that I face. They're having trouble with scaling. Um, they're having trouble maybe with the performance of some of their uh, dashboards or data sources. Um, the, the one thing I, I see consistently is a wide variety in the level or on, in the quality of deliverables that are produced. So I'll give you just a quick story. I was, I was working with a, one of our uh, really large enterprise client and I was there to kind of help them with a, a bunch of different topics related to their dashboards and, and things like that. And so I had different groups kind of coming in throughout the day and we would discuss you know, their dashboards. And there were a couple groups that came in uh, who really, you know, it was, I was just, you know, just tweaking a few things, right? Or helping them with a the calculation. I mean, they had nailed it. I mean, the, the performance was good. Um, visual best practices were being implemented. You know, all those things were, were you could see it. You could just see it in, in, the, in the work that was produced. And other groups were clearly, clearly struggling. I mean, they were just, the, the designs were just, you know, like violating every design rule of visual best practice analysis you could think of, right? And you know, it's 150 filters on a page, and I'm just going, you know, uh. and, um, and, and but, but you see that, and they work for the same company. They work for the same organization. A central COE is one of those things that can sort of look at any of these, you know, issues that are going to come up with an organization and help to kind of raise the general level, right? So we should see, it doesn't mean that everybody's writing, you know, these, you know, you know per perfectly uh, presentable in the public sort of visualizations, but the general level is going up. And when visualizations are not meeting the, uh, the basic requirements or really aren't, you know, using be visual best practices, there's somebody within the organization that can kind of help them can kind of help them get to the next level. So if I'm seeing a lot of this, these kinds of things, one of the, the issues that we're going to look at is, OK, we can solve a problem in a, you know, in a vacuum, just say, OK, we can fix that dashboard. But what are we doing to kind of raise the general level? How is your COE you know, performing these kinds of services throughout your organization? So if you're seeing a lot of that, if you're seeing a lot of variability, if you're seeing a lot of uh, variation in the quality, um, that might be one, one way to, to start tackling it. And again, I, I know there's always going to be people who are better 
just intuitively they get it, they know how to use more features and they can make things you know, more visually beautiful than others, that's okay. But what we're generally looking for is we're trying to raise the general level of, of everyone within our organization. Uh, I was working with a, um, a comp another company I was working with and they, um, they were really old school in terms of how they implemented Tableau. I mean, it was one of those things where they, they had BI system A, which I won't name, and they had replaced BI system A with Tableau, but really had tried to implement it in exactly the same way that they had done BI system A, right? I mean, it was pretty much like rip, we call it rip and replace, right? I had this report in this, now put it in Tableau. I was like, okay, right? And now they were doing a lot of this on their own, and so, um, uh, no COE. The COE wasn't even a, it, it didn't even occur to them that that might be something that they would need. It wasn't even on their radar. Um, but we, you know, we were spending, a, spending some time working through uh, a particular thorny kind of dashboard issue that they were working on. And um, they had all the right people in the room. You know, they had the UX people, they had the business analyst, um, they had the, the business users, the people who were responsible for putting together the final, they had all the right people in the room. Um, but they were thinking in terms of okay, I need to build a requirement spec for this so that I can get it to the UX team and they'll provide it to this, you know, this is all waterfall, right? It was all this, you know, kind of old school thinking. And so what I did was I said, well, where is that data? And they said, well, we can get it out of the old system, right? We can, well, I said, dump it into an Excel from the old system. So they ran a report and select all, all, all from your filters and they grabbed all the data, a couple hundred thousand rows. And uh, somebody else had Tableau Desktop, one of their analysts, and said, well, go ahead and put it in Desktop. And we spent the next two hours dragging and dropping and trying and doing things with the analysts in the room who really knew the data, right? And they made 75% of the progress they were going to make in terms of what this was actually going to look like as an end product in the room that day. I mean, they, had a, they walked out of the room with a pretty good idea of what they were going to deliver to the customer. And my point was, this is why you develop a COE in your organization. This is, this is, these are the kinds of things you're going to do differently now that you've implemented Tableau, that you are, you know, that are not like the way you used to do things before. You're not going to build these de you know, detailed, long specs that people are going to change and, and all that. You're going to build things on the fly. You're going to iterate through things very, very quickly because you can do that in Tableau. Those are the kinds of things that Tableau COEs help you do. And, it, and sometimes it takes you know, a couple of failures or a couple of uh, um, you know, school of hard knocks to, to kind of to learn that. But, you know, I really be, and that's why I said I really believe in this concept and I really believe I've seen the difference it can make in, in, in organizations. All right, so I'm going to take a quick poll here. So this is something we use internally for, for our own purposes to sort of analyze, okay, where are customers in their adoption of Tableau lifecycle? So this is kind of a Tableau slide. It's like, okay, you're land and then you, you get a server and you expand and then you explode and then you get enterprise usage. So that's just kind of an internal way that we look at our customers' uh, use of Tableau. That's generally how it goes. Not always exactly like that, but, but generally. Um, but in parallel to this, is the reason I, I, I throw this up there is because this actually should parallel the development of a COE process. At the same time all this is going on, your COE should be developing as, as well. So if you're way down the adoption curve, uh, you know, in terms of number of licenses and things like that, and you still are just talking about a COE, you know, probably not good, right? So something I definitely want to keep my eye on is I'm talking to, to a customer about where they are and where they are with the COE. So I'm gonna do a quick poll here. So uh, three groups. Um, which, which percentage, of, or if, raise your hand if you would say you're anywhere from just thinking about a COE for the first time through kind of getting the pieces in place to maybe start one. So you're, you're, you really haven't done much actual work, you're still in the, okay, all right, good, that's pretty good. What about, uh, the middle would be you're actually in the process of implementing some kind of COE. So you've, you've begun it, but you're not, you're not there yet. Okay. And then are there some people who have a COE and are just looking to make it better? All right, good, good. So, you know, regardless of where you are, I think there'll be something in what I talk about in terms of best practices for everybody, right? There'll be some, you know, some of this background stuff is good for you if you're still thinking about implementing it, but hopefully this is a good reminder to everybody of why we do this. Um, I try to make sure that, there's, that this content is appropriate kind of no matter where you are in the adoption life cycle. All right, so if you need one more reminder of why a center of excellence, you don't believe me, and you don't think it's a good idea, you're not sure. Uh, here's what Gartner says, so I don't know if that count for anything, but uh, what Gartner says is, uh, centers of excellence accelerate the uptake of new technologies, and they optimize core capabilities with higher efficiency and lower costs. Sounds very good. Uh, but I, I, I believe it. I mean, and I, I've seen it in, in, in this case with Tableau, and, and I, I, I do believe it, and, and I'm sure it works well with other technologies. <sighs> I don't know how that got in there. And all the D everybody from Washington, D.C. just walked out of the room. Um, 
sorry. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more practical. Um, let's talk about some actual best practices. So I'm going to kind of take you through a number of best practices. Before I do that, I've often been accused in some of these presentations of burying the lead. Well, I'm, I vowed I will not bury the lead in this one. Uh, I'm going to lead with what I think is kind of the most important thing, the only, the all, if you can only remember one thing from this presentation, which hopefully you'll remember more than one thing. Uh, but I am going to start with that because I think it's, it's really important and it sometimes uh, gets lost and it's kind of the foundation on which you're gonna build all the rest of these, these bits and pieces. So I'll start with that, and then I'll move into some of the different areas of, of a COA. This is it. Align IT and business within your COE. Um, sounds simple in, in, in certain ways, and it's, sometimes it's not the first thing that people think of, but uh, I have seen where this makes a huge difference in terms of the success uh, of a COE. It's not always easy to do, I get it, right? Because you're, you're now, you're all the way, right away, by definition, you're moving across organizational boundaries. You're, if you're from the IT world, you have to recruit uh, business people to be involved in what you're doing. If you're from the business world, you need to reach across the aisle, or whatever you want to call it, to IT, and figure out a way to get them involved. But a good Tableau center of excellence sits squarely in between the world of IT in the world of business and has representatives from both. Now, I, notice what I didn't say is that you, know, you have to co-lead it or anything like that. You don't have to. It's, a lot of times it's led by one side or the other. That's okay. Um, it's okay for IT to lead. It's okay for the business to lead. That's not, that's not uh, necessarily bad. But you definitely need to make sure that you have a balance in there in terms of their assignment. There's things that you know, everybody is good at. And, and by bringing all those skills uh, to bear, um, you're going to get the best result. Um, I just look at it as, as ba a balanced perspective and saying, look, here's the things that IT is really good at. IT is good at security. They know how to do data architecture. They know how to you know, set up infrastructure. They know how to you know, provision servers, do scalabilities, uh, monitor usage, understand what's going on with, uh, you know, with governance and, and those kinds of things. That's what they do on not just Tableau, but in, in other systems as well, in, in your operational systems. Um, so let's take advantage of the things that they're really good at and then let's have the business contribute what they're focused on. Uh, the content, right? The actual creative analytical work, you getting the users trained, acquiring the data, maybe even going outside the walls of the organization to get new data sources. That creative stuff like, oh, what if we could you know, bring Twitter data into our other feeds that we're doing, right? And thinking about all those. And then working with IT to say, how could we make this some, a data source that we can maintain over time? And by having those balanced perspectives, by having both people at the table, um, it prevents a lot of, I, I would say, heartache down the road when you know, I, or the business goes off and does a bunch of things without thinking about how it's ever going to scale, and it works for a while, and then it falls down, and it's really frustrating because it can't scale, right? And IT's like, well, if you had told us, we probably could have you know, built this differently. Or on the other hand, you've got governance locked down so tight, uh, you know, or data security locked down so tight that you know, the business just says, there's nothing I can work with here, right? It, it, there's, those kinds of things can happen. A balance. Um, I, I call it getting in each other's shoes. I mean, it really is about that, understanding what their, what their goals are, what they're trying to get done, what their restrictions are, what they can and can't do. Um, it really helps, I think, to, to try to bring the organization around. So as a kind of step up ahead of everything, um, you know, before I actually go into, into some actual areas that we're going to uh, talk about, I want to make sure that, that, that that's a, a, you know, something that you're thinking about. OK, so let's go back to our, our COE areas. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about, these three are the visible ones. So why do I call these visible? Well, um, usually when I'm talking about creating a Tableau COE, these are things that people have thought of, at least, or are on their radar. Um, they've, they've given these some thought. They're generally visible. It doesn't mean they've you know, implemented them necessarily, but they've considered that these are things that they're going to have to address. So that's why we're going to call them visible. It's not that they're any more or less important. It's just that they're things that, that are normally um, already considered in our, in our COE iceberg analogy. Um, so user enablement and adoption. Um, I, should, I should probably preface this by saying uh, people think about the user enablement from a license perspective and all that. They don't necessarily always think about adoption. So adoption, you might say, could actually be a little bit below the water. Uh, but it's really about how are we going to get users up and running. Uh, the metric, there's a metric I like to use for this, and I think it's a really challenging one for organizations to think about. So think about somebody in your organization who knows that Tableau exists within the enterprise, but that's about it. 
and they're a knowledge worker. They have a business problem to solve of some sort. And they say, you know, I know we have Tableau, and I know it can do this kind of stuff, OK? So from the moment they have that thought, okay, on October 9th or whatever, how long would it take them to actually be able to produce something that would solve that business problem? So if the answer right now is measured in months, and it could be, your goal is to reduce it to weeks. If your answer right now to that is measured in weeks, you want to reduce that to days. You need to be thinking about what are all the things that are getting in the way of that person becoming proficient. And, it, and if you think about it, there's a lot of things, right, that, that are in between there. One, they have to know about it. They have to know that Tableau even exists within the organization. So how have I publicized Tableau within the organization to say, we have this great way that you can solve analytics business problems. You really should check it out. Maybe it's a lunch and learn. Maybe it's something in the newsletter, whatever. There's some you know, knowledge of awareness that it even exists. Second is they need to know what to do with that knowledge. Um, if you are interested, send an email to or join us at this session or whatever that looks like uh, to actually sort of take that, that first step. Uh, there will probably be a process in place for them to get approved for a license or something like that. How quick is that process? How efficient is that process? Who is in charge of that? How much red tape is associated with that process? Um, and then they need to learn how to use the tool. How difficult or easy is it for them to learn how to do that? How about getting access to their data? How difficult or easy is it for them to, to do that? So when I'm thinking about adoption, I'm really thinking about all of those things, and I'm measuring that in a way that I can measure my progress as an organization. If those times are getting smaller and smaller, I know that, that I'm doing my job. As a, in a, from a COE perspective, I'm doing what I'm, the organization wants me to do. I'm making it easier for people to solve their business problems with, uh, with data. So it's more than just you know, enablement. It's more than just you know, training is part of it, right? certainly. Um, but that's only sort of one piece of it. Uh, another thing to consider is strategy. Uh, what is it you're trying to accomplish? So I've talked a little bit about, in the first part of this presentation, about why build a COE. Uh, I really believe people should codify that for their organizations. They should write down why their COE exists. You know, it doesn't have to be a four-page document. It can just be a short mission statement, maybe a paragraph, maybe a couple sentences. But actually write it down for your organization so everybody can kind of point to it and say, this is what we're all about. If you bring in new people into the COE, Hey, what are we all about? This is what we're all about. This is what we're trying to accomplish. And it can be specific for your organization. It can be real generic. You can borrow it from somebody else. doesn't matter. But I think it's really important to have a strategy. It also, you know, if, if, if you're like most organizations and you say, uh, I want to set up a COE within, a Tableau COE in our organization, uh, the first question you usually get is, uh, why and how much? Right? Your boss will say, or somebody will say, why do we need this? And you need to have a good answer to that question. How much is it going to cost? Resources, time, training, whatever. Um, we need to have good answers to those questions as well, right, to be able to address that. So a strategy helps build that into the whole process. So you've already thought about those questions before they were asked, and you know, what, you know how you're going to address them. Um, the third one that is above the water is dashboard best practices. Very, very important. Um, most people have at least thought about that, right, and have thought that these, these are something we need. But as I pointed out in one of my earlier examples, um, sometimes <laughs> it's not widespread throughout the organization. Sometimes certain groups, they know how to do dashboard best practices, and other groups within the organization are just they're, just, they're not at the same level. And so thinking in a comprehensive way about how to do dashboard best practices um, and how we're going to get people, how we're going to raise the level of people's skills is really important to creating a COE. I, I, I mean, I, there's a lot of sessions here that you can learn more about that, and I'm not really going to go into detail, but I just want to say that, you know, it is a really important thing. It is one of the things that will define your success for how you use Tableau, based on how well you're able to do that. All right, so those are some of our uh, above the water. Let's, let's start talking about some of the things that are maybe a little bit below the water, some things we may not often think of. Governance. Um, I really enjoyed hearing um, Sherry from Honeywell this morning talk about uh, some of their governance uh, you know, ex uh, experiences. And how true is that, right? We, we think we have our data governed, and then we let everybody download it into Excel and do whatever they want to do with it, right? And we go, no, no, no. And, and we think that somehow we have a, a well-governed, secure environment. Um, we don't. We just don't. 
know that we have no idea what's actually going on. And, and Tableau can bring about that governance in a way, in a sense that we actually know who's accessing the data, we actually know what's, what's out there, what's available. Um, it's an important area. The, the one thing I tell people to consider is, and this is, this is kind of a, your, it's kind of the personality of your organization. Um, oftentimes there are security rules and governance rules that are in place for, I'll say, historical reasons, or in, in, in an area where, and people just access the transactional system and that's all they really needed to see. Um, consider if you can organizationally open up some of your data sources within the organization. You know, is it really that this group is the only one that can see this data? If it's not, you know, it's, it's data that essentially is specific to that group. But if you can let other parts of the organization see it, you'll actually find some benefits in there you never anticipated. And I'll give you a, a real good example. When you get a COE going and people start sharing stuff, like, I, oh, here's a dashboard I created. Tell me what you think. And somebody from a completely different department that knows nothing about that part of the business at all or, or whatever can go in there, look at it, go on a server, download it, say, you know, make a couple changes to it, upload it to a sandbox and say, hey, here's some changes I made. You might like them, right? That is huge. It's huge for an organization. And if you've restricted your data, it's just that much more difficult. You're like, well, let me create some dummy data and you can, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it's not as natural of a process. So again, it, it all depends on the organization. I get it. There's certain data that's secure that you can't allow that to do, but allow that, that to happen with. But if you can, it's a really good way to actually um, to share those kinds of things. I'll tell you what, what really brought this lesson home to me was um, uh, I was at a, a, con or a conference event, and a guy who's a Tableau Jedi viz master of some sort, I mean, he just, he's like, his stuff is like, I mean, I've seen some of the stuff he's built on Tableau Public. It's like, it's mind-blowingly good. Because it's good analytically, and it's good, like, artistically. It's like, really good. And he was talking about the process of creating a certain dashboard. And he's like, oh, yeah, I shared it with so-and-so, and then they kind of improved it, and then he gave me some other ideas, and I improved. I'm like, okay, so he's sharing his dashboards to make them better? Why the heck? I mean, it's like, okay. And he, you know, I'm thinking this guy's got it all figured out, right? It's like, okay, if those guys at that level are sharing dashboards with each other to help make them better, everybody needs to be doing that. Everybody can get better input, better you know, suggestions from other people within the organization. So what does this have to do with governance? My only point is to say governance is important, but again, to the degree that you can open up some of those, those you know, rules within that, you'll get some of those better uh, uh, efficiencies that you're, that you're looking to get within your organization, and I think just better results. Um, but we have to think about governance comprehensively, and we have to think about who can see things and all that, and all that can be built into your, infra your infrastructure within Tableau Server, obviously, uh, but it, you need to think about it ahead of time. Um, obviously, administration is a big one. So that's everything from you know, licensing to server setup, um, logins, et cetera. IT is really good at this, right? They know how to, how to run these systems. They can say, oh, let's figure out if we want to sync this with AD or you know, all those kinds of questions. But it's good to think about that as early on in the, in the process as possible. It's good to incorporate that into the role of the COE. Yes, most of the lifting will be done by IT, but you want to make sure that that's under the, the heading, even if it's just, how does a user get a login on server, right? That's a COE should be handling that, even if administratively all that's being done by IT, right? So they should at least be aware of what that process is. Uh, and then maintenance and monitoring. So how are we making sure that this environment is uh, staying, uh, I won't say fresh, but it, it, it's actually being uh, watched over. So I, again, IT is really good at things like, you know, backup and recovery and all those kinds of things. But what about things like, you know, provisioning new sandboxes, right? I've got a new project and I wanna create a sandbox out there that I can create some visuals in because my team is still developing the ideas, it's not production yet. Um, how easy is it for me to, to be able to administer something like that? And then how, uh, is there somebody watching it so that if in three years nobody has touched it anymore, I make sure all that content gets deleted with the proper you know, warnings and all that to, to, think to, to people. So what's those processes associated with that? It's, it's methodology, it's process, I get it. It's like, you know, it's not sexy or glamorous, but it's important, right? And you've gotta make sure that all those things are being taken care of. IT can help, because again, they, they're used to doing things like, you know, some of those backup and recovery and those kinds of things, but a lot of that has to come from the business as well. How much do you wanna give, uh, allow people to do? How much, you know, server bandwidth do you wanna give to people? Whatever, how, whatever those rules are, um, there's some, some specifics that need to be set up, and then that needs to be watched on an ongoing basis. The other thing about monitoring is that actually can be really, really powerful in terms of understanding what's going on in your organization. 
So I really encourage business users to spend some time reviewing usage logs, right? Even if it's not like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm reviewing a usage log. It's, it actually tells you, you know, which things are, are rising to the top, which ones are generating the most interest. I mean, I, even within Tableau, I mean, I do that. I'm always amazed at, like, how do I find visas that I don't know about? I go and look at the ones that are the most highly viewed, and I go look at those because there's usually some pretty good stuff in it, right? Some very, very interesting um, stuff about our organization that, that I see. You can even look within your, you know, your specific silo and see which ones are the most popular. So monitoring the usage, I think, is, is not just for, for IT and making sure we don't run out of disk space. It's also for business users as well. Okay, got a few more underneath the water. Architecture, um, again, that's, that's pretty much uh, um, making sure that our servers don't run out of gas, making sure that we have enough memory, making sure that all those things are taken care of. But that involves planning with the organization. Um, I'm working with another company that's adding a, uh, a brand new, pretty major analytical application to their environment. Brand new application, new users, new everything. And you know, they had to work through the COE to plan and say, they had to do some testing to say, okay, how many, you know, show us some of your sample dashboards that you're gonna create. And they ran all kinds of tests against those dashboards. How performant were they? Um, how many users could, you know, they actually ran tab mont or a, a tab jolt test to say how many simultaneous users can it handle before it starts to shut down? What's the memory on the server? So all that planning for that new application, the business had to do, and then work directly with, uh, through the COE to make sure that it was being planned for. So they, they have to order, if they want to order like a new hardware and new service, they got to do that like six months in advance, right? And so if you're going to have to do that six months in advance, you need to make sure that the COE is kind of at the center of that, that they know all the tentacles that are out there, all the new applications that are coming online. Uh, obviously, the result, if you don't do that, is either they can't go live because it's going to kill the server, um, or they got to wait. You know, and it's, and, or, or they go live and it does kill the server, I guess that's the other option. Uh, but, but none of those are, are sort of good outcomes. And so I think part of it is making sure that your administration and your, your uh, architecture team is tied into the COE itself. All right, gathering requirements. This one is sometimes completely um, kind of overlooked, but helping your customers, helping the people who are using Tableau learn how to gather requirements in the organization. So again, I've seen some real uh, victories in terms of, of um, getting off that whole waterfall way of doing IT and doing business intelligence of like, okay, give me the spec for the report you want and I'll create it. And actually uh, having the COE teach people how to build things interactively, how to build things in an agile fashion, how to go, you know what, I don't have the perfect data set. I got a pretty good data set. We're going to build something. You're going to tell me what you think. And then we're going to go back and forth a couple times. And then when it's perfect, then I'll go get you the data. Different methodology, different mindset, different way to work. So how is that new mindset going to get into the minds of people who've been doing BIIT the same way since the 90s? Right? Well, the COE is going to help them with that. The COE is the one that's going to raise the bar on how we do requirements gathering and how we roll out new applications within the organization. Okay, community, again, another area where I think there's um, not enough emphasis. Um, hopefully, you get the idea, this, this, this should be fun, right? I mean, this should be a little bit uh, entertaining for people to actually uh, work on. And so how do I actually make sure that they are, you know, uh, getting something out of this other than just creating visualizations? Well, we really believe in, in celebrating uh, when people do things right and when people do things that are a little bit out there, when people challenge themselves. So uh, one of the things that I've seen a couple of organizations do, for a, they pick a new user who published something who's never published something before in the, last, in the last quarter and something that has a lot of views and they talk about it and they bring them up and they say, tell us about your visualization that you created. Well, I did this and we, you know, they celebrate the fact that, hey, it's gotten you know, 486 views since it went live and normally the story goes a little like this. I didn't know anything about Tableau when I started, right? It starts out with like, I didn't know what I was doing. I just started, you know, I, I, I worked through it. And then they tell people, well, I, I looked up this video online or I took this class, right? And it's, in, it's encouraging to people. It's inspiring to other people who are sitting out there going, I don't know how to do this at all, right? I, I, I'm not a data analyst. I, don't, I can't do it. But if you see other people in your organization and you celebrate that a little bit, you know, give them a, you know, a little bit of a, just some recognition. It doesn't have to be anything big. Just some recognition about what, they're, what they were able to achieve. Uh, I think that goes a long way. And so that's part of what 
uh, building community is. I mean, that, that's a lot of thing. You know, no matter how much of an expert you are, even if you're just, you know, just getting started, being able to celebrate uh, what you've learned, I think, is huge. Um, so experts do this and beginners do this and, and, and all that. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of programs you can do. It's lunch and learns and, uh, you know, and some companies have their own internal iron viz competitions where they you know, give a data set and have a challenge and just say, look, it's not up on stage, but they say, you've got a week. What can you do with this data set, right? And sometimes it's real, real critical business stuff. Sometimes it's you know, related to the business, but maybe not you know, critical. See what people come up with. Again, it's a fun way to do it, fun way to celebrate. The other thing is when they describe their visualizations, you, everybody in the audience learns. Everybody who's listening learns something about the, you know, oh, yeah, I didn't know you could do that. Um, just like at these iron visits, I always learn something. It's like, oh, I would never have thought to do it that way, but that's a really good way to do it. So. All right, and then uh, finally, data source development and management. This is, um, I guess, my, uh, my, my biggest um, focus in life. I mean, I would say when I go out to a customer and we start talking about you know, things that they need to incorporate in their COE, this one is the, and in, in, I didn't do this on purpose. See how it's the furthest on the bottom of the screen? I think it's the furthest on the bottom of people's thinking <laughs> um, in terms of its relative, how important it is relative to how much attention it gets. Um, having good data sources in place, hopefully published, hopefully verified, uh, hopefully certified, but even just having them out there and published is just absolutely critical and makes a huge difference in terms of um, how successful people are going to be with their visualizations, how easy it's going to be for them to um, work with Tableau in general, um, and the biggest thing is what kind of performance they're going to see. Uh, there are just some you know, performance you know, items that have absolutely nothing to do with Tableau and absolutely nothing to do with the actual calculations or visualizations created, but everything to do with how the data has been um, published and, and sourced. And um, I, don't know, I don't have time in this presentation, but if you want some good stories on that, I can tell you some good stories about uh, how, that, how that's worked. And, but again, it's, it's way under the water. It really needs to be part of the COE's mission is to get that, make sure that that is being recognized and people are actually actively thinking about that. All right, so those are less visible areas. So what does growth look like with the COE? Uh, I mean, these are the kinds of things that should be implemented. You know, we've man we manage our security environment. We track our usage. Um, we use our best practices. We, um, we have active server administration. We have certified data sources. Our users are trained. We have adoption plans. Um, we have a community built around Tableau. These are the things, these are the kinds of things we're going for. So this begs the question, how do I know if I'm getting there? All right, so I'm going to throw it out to you guys real quick. Just shout out something or if you have an idea. Give me some metrics based on all the things we've talked about. I gave you one metric earlier, which was the time it would take from the person who has the idea until they actually solve their business problem. That measuring of that time, that's a metric that you can use. What would be another sample metric you could use to measure how effective your organization was in utilizing Tableau? Yep, great one. Percent certified data sources. Number of and percent. So how many, how many data sources do I have out there that are certified, right? And, and is it, it was one last quarter and it's for this quarter or whatever that your number is based on your organization. And of all the data sources out there, how many of them have actually gone through the certification process? Really good metric to think about, right? How do I know if I'm doing better on data source? Yeah. Yeah, so you can get some, some basic usage data, um, but, but you're, you're, most of your true usage data is going to be you know, based on server, right? You'll know if they interact with things on server, and you'll know that. It's hard to know if they're not a publisher, how, if, if people are just working individually on their desktop. Um, but we usually encourage people to um, have some kind of check-in with people. Have you used your tablet desktop in the last 90 days? Have that be part of a survey. Right, that, that, we put, that they put out to all their users. And you know, do it quarterly, just to understand. And so the, the metric there, I think, is percent of license utilized in 30 days or 90 days or whatever. Yeah, good. Any other ones? Yeah. The lesser number of Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. How many, yeah, if you go into a meeting, right, and you're going to discuss the numbers, is there a chance, just once, I would love to see a Tableau Viz in there instead of a PowerPoint with somebody cut and pasting something in there, just once, right? Uh, but yeah, right? That, does your business 
talk about the numbers that are in these visualizations. Is that part of your DNA as an organization? And, and when you go into those meetings and they're gonna talk about the numbers and you see that, hey, these are Tableau visualizations that are interactive. I can say, they, you know, if, if somebody is in the meeting and says, well, here's our pattern for the last 120 days, it goes, well, I wanna see it for the last six months. And you go, oh, okay, hang on. Oh, here it is for the last six months. That's what we're going for, not I'll get back to you on that, right? We want that data discussion to be part of it. So that's a great one. How much is that? And it's hard to maybe measure that, but to understand if I'm starting to see those things come into my, my meetings, my executive, you know, uh, and less maybe Excel-based or PowerPoint-based, that's a good thing. Good, good. That's a good one. Yeah. So from what perspective? Yeah, so, so right, if I'm, if I'm tracking this, am I actually taking some action against it or am I actually affecting it, right? I should be able to, I mean this, hopefully we're not just building this because it's interesting. Hopefully we're building this because we can actually do something and, and can we measure what kinds of changes that we're making. And it's not always easy to do that, but there's certainly, I mean, we work with a lot of our customers on doing that, saying, okay, you wanted to look at your sales numbers. Now what are you gonna, you know, our sales numbers going up as a result of that? What was that metric again? So the metric is basically, um, are we affecting the numbers that we're, that we're presenting, right? If we're, if we're creating a, 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 a dashboard on sales numbers, we should see something changing in our, potentially in our sales numbers based on what we do. So it's, it's, basically, it's, a, it's an overall metric that says, are we actually doing something with, with what we have? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. That's a great, 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 great one. That is so huge. So what he said was basically, are more of the actual reports being created by end users as opposed to requests that are sent to IT, right? That's a great one to measure. If you can measure that and you can see an improvement there, that's, you know you're on the right track and you know your COE is doing the right things if you're starting to see that metric improve. Okay, there's a number of other ones. I wanna I want move on, but, but there's a number of those, and, and it is really important to, me, to measure these kinds of things, to start thinking about how do I know if I'm doing better? You know, and it's everything from user logins to, to usage and those kinds of things. All right, so I wanna make sure that I give you a few kind of practical things here before, before we end on, on how to actually get started. So here's some places to start. If you're trying to think about, I'm gonna get back to my desk on Monday, I'm gonna forget everything that, that Mike said. I don't know what, what it was, but I think it was about a COE. Um, Go to this slide and say, okay, I've got a few things I can at least do, right? A few th places I can get started. Um, if you're just getting started, you may want to identify the executive sponsor for this, right? If you're talking about building a COE, you want somebody on board who buys into what it is that you're going to do. And, and obviously, you need to be prepared. You need to have the whys all set up and maybe even the how much is all set up to be able to do that. Um, there's tons of stories out there about how organizations have received significant value from this. Um, you can seek those out. You can seek out help from Tableau and from your salesperson and other things, but really identify who the executive sponsor is. Decide, decide what your, your BI strategy and charter is going to be. What are you actually going to try to do? Um, build a plan. How are we going to implement this thing? Right? How are we actually going to get it to, to roll out? Um, the first thing I talked about, strengthen that partnership between business and IT, because no matter what you do, you're going to have to have that in place. And sometimes that's a short-term project and sometimes it's a long-term project, right? Depending on where you are in your organization and how things have gone in the past and how much history there is, uh, that can be uh, easy or difficult depending on, on the kind of the culture of your organization. Uh, start thinking about some of the things on how to measure progress, right? If, if, how am I gonna know if I'm doing better? And then, you know, again, that's another thing. If your, um, if your boss wants to know, well, how do we know if we're being effective? You wanna be able to answer that question. I would expect, like right now, you know, we have Tableau Server, but it takes three months for somebody to get up to speed, you know, and that's not effective. We want to reduce that down to, I don't know, 60 days or whatever, you know, whatever your, your, your metric or your goal is. Or right now, there are three people who do all of the publishing for our organization. Oof, no, we don't want that. We want 30 people to be publishing reports in our organization. That's the metric that we're going to measure, right? And so we've, we talk about that and how we're going to measure progress. One other thing I always tell people, it's a great way to start, just build a site. 
So create a sample site if you use SharePoint or some kind of intranet or wiki or whatever you use. Just go out there and build a real basic, here's a COE site that we're going to you know, build off of. And it, it, maybe it's just one page to start with, uh, but you've got you know, kind of a landing page. You've got your charter. Um, maybe you talk about how to become pa Tableau certified. Maybe you talk about how to get a new license. If, you'd if you would like a license of Tableau, here's the steps you go through. Fill out this form or, or whatever it is. All that, it's a, it's a one-stop shop for people who want to get started. Somebody, something you can always refer people to 24-7 to learn more about how to do things. Also, a great place to capture your wins. A great place to say, look, here's a success story that we had um, in the last month. Or here's something that... Um, you know, really worked well for this particular department. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate those things and use that um, as, a, as, as a place to do it. Think like a new user when you're setting it up. If you knew nothing about Tableau and you were going to go to this site, would, you, um, would this be helpful to you? You know, it's the people who already know Tableau and all that, yeah, they're going to go there occasionally, but it's the, it, the people you really want to focus on are the people who are just kind of getting into it for the first time. So you want to make sure that, that it's different, you know, it, it, it's set up there, that it works well. Um, make it easy for them to, to get started. All right, I'm going to skip through this real quick. In the interest of time. All right, I, I do want to put up one uh, org structure. I do get this question a lot. So these last couple slides are really uh, kind of about questions that I get. Um, and one is, how do we set up an organization? This is just a sample, so it's not like it has to be set up this way. Um, but the main idea is there needs to be somebody to coordinate you know, kind of this, this whole thing. If you don't know who that person is within your organization, the bad news is it's probably you. <laughs> um, but, but that's not all bad, right? Because honestly, I mean, it, it's a, it, and I'll talk about this in, in a second here, but um, you can do. I mean, if you're interested in this topic, if you want to build a CU, if you want to see value delivered to your organization, um, it, it's, it's not a bad you know, sort of place to center yourself and, and, and to get things done. Um, Tableau people can tell you lots of stories uh, from our customers of people who have you know, built careers on building up the Tableau uh, leadership within their organization and, and getting this whole thing done. It's not easy. And you have to think about how you want to organize it across the organization. You want subject matter experts involved. You want the user community involved. Um, and there needs to be somebody kind of heading it all up. But it's, it's, um, it's valuable. And it does, it does provide significant value to the organization. Another question I usually get is, how can Tableau the product help? So I just put in three examples right here that you can think of. Uh, uh, being able to be collaborative, using comments on views is a great way to kind of get that whole community thing going. Hey, I checked out your viz. Here's something you may think about. I mean, being able to comment directly on your visualization, available in 10.4 if you haven't checked, or redone in 10.4 if you haven't checked it out. Uh, all the dashboard usage statistics, all the details, most viewed, all that. And then, of course, data source certification. Three things that are, in that are set up in Tableau that the COE can take advantage of right away to get more value. All right, so what's the elephant in the room? This is organizational change. This is, this is, this is a big thing. Um, it's not easy, right? I totally get it. Building Tableau dashboards is really simple compared to doing this kind of stuff, to building a COE. Um, but if I can get a little philosophical here for a minute, I mean, the, you know, we, we talk about the purpose of Tableau's goal is to help people see and understand their data. If you're a person who wants to implement a COE within your organization, that's your goal, too. Your goal is to help your people in your organization see and understand the data. It's a cool mission. It's a cool mission. You get to see somebody who didn't know anything about it have that aha moment when they were finally able to get to some data that they hadn't been able to get to for a long time or build something that they didn't even know they, they could create. You know, we internally at Tableau get a total rush out of that about helping customers, helping them and hearing their stories about how they were able to see and understand that, their, their data. Um, you get that same opportunity if you build a COE. Again, it's not easy. It's, it's, not, um, it's not like you just roll out of bed and get it done. You have, there's a lot to think about. You have to think about your organization. You have to think about your structure, how to accomplish you know, you're, you're dealing with interpersonal things. You're dealing with legacy thinking in certain cases. You're dealing with um, budgets and things that make it all, you know, much more complicated. But, it's, but people do it, and, and it's, not, um, it's not the exception when it gets done. It really, most organizations, uh, once they get to a certain size, they do implement a COE. And they always try to get better at it, which is good. But, it, you know, the encouragement is it can be done. And I, I think it's a really, really rewarding place to do. Most of the people I work with, 
who work in the COE, they love their jobs. I mean, again, it's challenging, but they love what they do. And they like being able to learn about the right way to do things within an organization and then spread that knowledge throughout their company uh, or organization. So um, it's organizational change. I, I mean, I want, I want that to be first and foremost in your thinking, but don't, don't kind of let that, that scare you. Let that you know, inspire you to, to, to get things done. So happy sailing. Uh, that's about it. So I'm gonna leave, I've got a couple minutes. Please fill out the, the survey form. It really is helpful. Um, I've, I've, this session is being repeated on Thursday. Um, so if you know any of your colleagues that might be interested, it's, it's on the schedule. It'll be repeated on Thursday. Uh, same content and everything. Uh, please fill out your survey. And if there's any questions, feel free to step up to the uh, I, Should we step up? Uh, go ahead and just ask him, I guess. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. So, okay, so the question is, which line of business is the COE uh, best to excel? Um, my whole point is, is definitely about balance. I, I don't feel strongly whether IT needs to lead it or the business needs to lead it, but I will say this. More often than not, it's IT-led. Whether that's good or bad, I don't think it, it necessarily matters, but I will say that more often than not, the COE is IT-led, simply because I think of the architecture and that kind of stuff drives it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the question was, do we see COEs being uh, generally more successful if they're centralized or if they're sort of federated throughout the organization? Um, most people start out with centralized, and I think that really makes the most sense. I think until you get really big, um, the central model seems to work pretty well. And even some very large organizations still are centralized. Eventually, you may have to replicate yourself um, just for organizational reasons, maybe for geography reasons, you may want to have a, an APAC COE or an EMEA CP or, or a COE. But generally, that centralized model seems to be where, where most people arrive. And I think it's a good one. I think it, it works pretty well. Yeah? You talk about you know, IT and business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, how do you align that to follow up to the question you know, over there? Yeah. Is it the central role of a person or is it a Yeah, yeah. Duty? Good point. And so you're incentivizing people to be good to your IM. Right. Are there performance career maps? Or yeah, great, gr great question. So, so the question is really about how does this all tie into HR from a perspective of do I have the word tableau in my you know, job description, for example, or is it I'm a BI analyst that just also happens to do the Tableau thing. Um, I've seen it done a number of ways. Uh, I think what you're looking for is kind of this model where you probably have to have a few people, once you get to a certain size, that that really is their whole focus. You know, where the maintaining, you know, Tableau might even be in their job title, right, where you get to that point. But, but a lot of the people are not, are, are actually analysts from different areas. The, the key is the organization needs to reward their contributions. There needs to be a sense in which contributing to the knowledge of the organization in this way is considered valuable to the organization. And HR absolutely has to be on board with that. And there has to be, that has to be, in, you know, whether it's reviews or whether, you know, I mean, somehow, you know, that, you know, people's bosses understand that, okay, if they took five hours out of their week to basically help build up the organizational analytics knowledge, that that was time well spent. Um, and that's, it's, it's not easy, but I think it's, um, it's getting better. I'm seeing more and more organizations doing that. They're, they're recognizing, and there's a lot of articles about this, about how valuable that really is to the organization. And getting, making sure that that's wrapped into people's job descriptions is really important because very few people will have Tableau as the, their beginning and end of their job, right? It's gonna be part of what they do. Yeah. Good, good question. Yeah. You mentioned waterfall and agile Yeah. Yeah, so the uh, question is about waterfall and agile approach and how important is that. Um, I really, uh, just one of the huge advantages to rolling out Tableau is the ability to do things in an agile way and, and really a hyper agile way in the sense that uh, you can you know, iterate through designs very, very quickly. I think that, ha that type of thinking needs to, needs to creep into the organization and a COE is a great way to do that. If you're used to doing things the old way with specs and design documents and all that, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a change, but, but all of Tableau is really a different way to think. And so 
Um, that has to be part of what a COE does, is teaching the organization this new way to work, a much more agile fashion. Not expecting, we should not expect perfect data when we start a project. I tell people that all the time. Start with the imperfect data that you have today. And people are like, well wait, we're gonna have to, this isn't gonna work, we don't have the perfect, it's like, just start, you'll see, right? And we're, we're working through that. So the, to the degree that you've been exposed to agile methodologies, you will be far more successful in terms of how you implement Tableau, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that if you start small and you don't have good staff with you, you first, and if so, what are the basic roles? Yeah. So the question is, would it make sense to start small when, when you staff your, your COE? Yeah, I mean, generally, um, what <laughs> a COE sometimes grows organically out of somebody who just knows a little bit more about Tableau than anybody else, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of the start of a COE, and that's about as small as you can start. Um, what, what you should see, though, is you should have a path to creating that. You know what I mean? I, I think it's really good even to write it down and say, okay, you know, if you're, talking, if you're the person and you're talking to your boss, okay, I'm spending 10 hours a week on my tablet. How about by the end of 2018, if we continue to grow this, you know, this is going to become my full-time job. Are you okay with that, right? Is that, okay? is that you know, what, what are we working towards? Because if we're not gonna grow and we're just gonna stay at this and you just want a part-time COA, that's fine. But in most organizations, that role is gonna grow. As you, and there's a, I mean, you saw I covered, what, maybe 10, 12 different areas that you have to be thinking about, everything from adoption to, you know, administration to um, dashboard de design and, and data source design. There's a ton of things to think about. So it's okay to small, start small, but I think if you really buy into the whole COE concept, that's gonna expand pretty quickly. You know, it's, it's hard to just do a COE part-time. Yeah. Okay, yeah, um, so, so the question was basically when you implement a Tableau solution and now let's say you start having like trouble tickets associated with visualizations and things like that. Is that like, like there's a problem with the viz, can somebody fix it, that kind of thing? How do you do something? Or how do you do something, yeah. Um, the how do you do something, uh, I generally think that's best done through community, community type stuff. Um, I'm a real big believer in office hours. So having um, an hour or two hours a week where somebody is basically just there to answer, internally to the organization, just there to answer questions that come up from other people about how to use Tableau. So they're gonna come in, you know, it's like between nine and 11 on Friday mornings, I know if I have a Tableau question or if my viz is not doing what I thought it should do, I know I have somebody I can go to each week to answer that question. It can be one person, it can be several people, whatever. I'm a huge believer in that because I think um, it, it, even if you know, people send a, you know, it's like, oh, I don't wanna ask for help, you know, or they get, kinda get intimidated by it. If you set up something where you're like, no, please, I want you to come ask me for help, people are much more likely to take advantage of it, right? And you don't want them to get frustrated. It's like, oh, I got so close, but I couldn't solve this last little issue on my viz, so I scrapped it. I mean, th that's what you're trying to avoid. So make sure that you have something set up to allow them to be able to do that. Now, as far as things that like go into production and have trouble tickets and things like that, um, that's really kind of your, your own organization's call as far as how you want to handle it. But I would say most of the development work actually seems to get done kind of in a sort of a community, you know, less formal way than that. Uh, but it, certainly if it's a production application, you need to have a way to track tickets and, you know, everything from the data's wrong to the viz won't load or whatever. So if you've used one of those, app, you know, a bug tracking application, that'd be fine. Yeah, back in the corner. Yeah. We are, we're a big organization. We have two problems. Okay. One is, yes, we want to start a group and grow it from here. But we also have thousands of users spread out all over the organization. Yeah. They're all behaving in a different way. Yeah. So I think there are other people. Yeah. So. No, but that, that's, and, and that's really a, a lot of what I'm talking about. I mean, your goal is to kind of, you got people up here and you got people down here and you got, I mean, your goal is to basically you know, raise all the boats, right, to a certain extent. And the way you raise all the boats is you have to understand where they're coming from and what they're doing with Tableau. And you have to understand how are they using it, um, where are the opportunities. So if, you know, if I was going in or if I was a, a COE in a really large organization where there's people using Tableau, I don't even know, I have no idea what they're doing. I think you've got to take some time and evaluate. 
right? You've just got to, I don't know if you just log on to server and start looking at the visits they're creating or you get together, you do conference calls with people all over the world or wherever, you know, wherever they are to try to understand what's going on. And I think what you'll see is you'll start to understand the patterns that are out there, the usage patterns as well as kind of the issues that people are having consistently. So is it a data source, you know, do we see a lot of data source issues? Do we see a lot of problems getting licenses? Do we see, you know, people who have got licenses who don't use that? Whatever, whatever those things are, I would definitely spend some time doing a survey, trying to get my arms around how your organization is actually using that and start saying, okay, now we know where to focus. Because you're not gonna be able to do everything all at once. So maybe you pick a couple low hanging fruit based on what you're seeing. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so my, I guess my question or advice would be, how do we shift that paradigm within our organization and adjust? So how to change from what a center of excellence to center of, from what perspective? Just, um, developing that, <laughs> that yeah, so. Not in our real house, not right. Like default, yeah. Right. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I try, you know, and this is, we, we, within Tableau we fall into that, we have a lot of that same issue, right? Where we'll come out to kind of work with a customer on something and they'll, well, can you build this dashboard for me? And it's like, well, we, you know, yeah, can we? Sure we can. Um, but our goal is, is, you know, to enable you to be able to do that. And so um, we usually try to take a, you know, kind of a no hands on keyboard sort of uh, approach to, to working with uh, the business issue. It's like, why don't you create the first version and then I'll uh, fix it? And that's okay, right? It's not, it's not an indictment. It's like, just create the most basic version of what you're trying to do. And then we'll work with you, right? And then, and then we'll do it. What you, do, you want to do is just put a little bit of the load back on the people who are asking you for, you know, to build something for them, right? And, and it's, it's normal. People ask for the CRA to build stuff all the time. You're saying, okay, well, why don't you just create the first version. That'll give you a good idea of what we want to do. And then, um, then we'll, we can work on it together or, or whatever, as opposed to just saying, Here's my data, can you build a dashboard on that, right? And so it's, you're gonna have to change their minds a little bit. And at first they're gonna be like, what? You know, I mean, there, there's a little bit of that. But I think if you do it in, a, in sort of a light way, where you, the burden you're putting on them is pretty light. You're just saying, get the data and create something really basic. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not creating, asking you to create a production ready dashboard. And then we'll go from there. It's a, it's a baby step approach, right? You're try, but you're trying to redefine your role. You're trying to say, I'm not the guy that builds it. Right? I'm the guy that helps you build it. And, and making that distinction is, is really critical. Yeah, one more, and then we, uh, we probably got to vacate the room here. Sure. Yeah, it's. Yeah, the question is, should, should a COE be a department or should it just kind of be like a mindset? And the answer is both. You, you, you probably need some kind of organized, you know, entity within your organization that has like titles and responsibilities and people and budget and all that. But it, more important, I mean, you can get that done and you're still not going to have an effective COE unless you've got the mindset. And the mindset is, I help you. I help other people in the organization. I share knowledge. I share information on how to build visualizations. I share information on celebrating um, people who do things well. Um, that's my mindset. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to build that into your organization. Do you still need the, the title and the budget and all that kind of stuff? Sure you do. But I think if I had to pick, I mean, if I had, you don't want to pick between, you need them both. But the mindset is really, really important. It's, it's absolutely critical to making it work. Yeah, good question. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Fill out your survey. We'll see you soon.